Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. In this video, I have this uh, Sony MP3 player, it's an old one. Uh, let's see what model it is. It's an NWS202F. And uh, this is one of, I, I believe, the last models that they released. This was like sports-centric, um, I guess you could say. It was like kind of designed for like uh, exercising and whatnot. It has like a pedometer. And it has uh, different like stopwatch modes going on. I got a pretty good deal on this. These are pretty rare and hard to find. And when you do find them, they tend to be, for some ridiculous reason, people think that these are worth hundreds of dollars. Even though something's rare doesn't mean necessarily that it's actually worth that amount. Anyway, ran aside, I found one of these for 30 bucks, And it was, I think, from the Netherlands or something. So I... Um, imported it i like collecting this stuff and i like restoring them so i wanted to get one i always wanted to get one to take apart and see how they fit everything inside uh, because it has this very interesting cylindrical package and the outer case is i believe it's aluminum feels like aluminum might be magnesium but anyway so i got one and um unsurprisingly the battery was uh pretty toast and this is the original battery itself and for testing well Basically, the seller was was pretty honest about it. He said if you plugged it into USB, it worked. When he unplugged it, it stopped working. That pretty heavily implies that the battery's toast. So I pulled the old battery out, and I put a tiny one in just to test it. And it charged this up. It ran off this, um, even though this is a much smaller battery. So this ran for a lot less time, and it couldn't physically fit inside because it was too thick. But anyway... Uh, just for testing, that was fine. And then I went on uh, eBay and I searched for a replacement battery. So another 10 bucks in. You really only do this kind of stuff if you actually are into like repairing stuff. Because already for a 500, this model is 512 megabytes. For a 512 megabyte MP3 player, you can have one for much, much less, much cheaper. So obviously I really love Sony uh, vintage MP3 players. That's why I'm doing this. Anyway... The whole point was I had to import a battery from like Germany and uh, interesting thing. I luckily checked as soon as I got the battery and this was the original cord itself and the polarity was switched. So I'm already not happy about that because this is like the only company that, that sells replacements and they sell them across a wide range of MP3 players. And for them to send a battery with, you know, the polarity inverted, if I had plugged that in straight away, it could have fried this board. And pretty much there's no recourse for that. I cannot find another one of these for a reasonable price. So I would have been super pissed if that happened. Uh, either way, that's very unprofessional for a battery company to have, you know, the polarity completely opposite. That's ridiculous. So they're going to get a, a strongly worded email from me about that. Uh, but anyway, so I had the new battery fitted and I just charged up just a little bit just to make sure it works. And you can see there, it does power on still. I'm just going to put it on hold. And the screen has very little burn in, which is a very good sign. Uh, that's often not the case with these uh, OLED screens from, you know, from that vintage. Anyway, I am referencing the, like, the service manual that I found online so that I can figure out how exactly this goes together and comes apart. So I'm not really doing anything special in terms of that. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm just gonna pull this off now. I'm trying to figure out how to get this guy back together because I put this together, uh, or I took this apart well over like two months ago. The battery took forever to arrive. Uh, so now it's just a matter of me trying to reassemble it and I kind of forget how so that might be an issue I think pretty much just uh, Gonna try to slide this back in I just got to be really careful that like the Nothing snags in it And I got to say, this is like a really tight, uncomfortable fit. So it does slide in. Make sure it doesn't pinch the wires there for the battery. And there is 
Yeah, a little cutout for that. There we go. And just to make sure, yeah, the screen still turns on and then crack anything. And I believe, hopefully I have this right. I saved all the screws, but I can't remember which ones are which. So it really should have, I, everything got thrown in a box pretty much when I was moving um, my lab around and, and reorganizing and everything. And I didn't get a chance to label anything. So yeah. <laughs> Well, I do remember two screws went in here because there's a three different length size screws. And I'm not sure which goes where. There we go. Shortest one, I guess, goes in there. Okay, I remember because there's this random little bracket here. I think it's supposed to go in once you insert the end cap and this actually holds it down in there. It's a little bit confusing, I'm not going to lie. Um, I think this is a good time as any to insert the um, control mechanism. And let's see. Maybe it goes over the top. Let's see if that works. I remember this was actually tricky to get back in. Okay, yeah, that's the straddle, the top black piece of plastic, and it's weird. It doesn't actually, like, very securely go in there. It just sort of swivels as you pull this wheel in and out. Okay, next step, I believe this cap actually has to go on, and it has to be in the hold position, so push it all the way in. And just make sure that in the two outer positions, it still rotates freely. And then this part was very odd. And when I was taking apart, I had a lot of trouble getting the cap off because there are actually these little brass pins and they go in on either side. And these are just press fit, which is really odd. You figure that they would have some kind of screws, but you just go right in. And all they do is hold this, this silver cap on, on the outside now. Okay. And there were some pieces of like conductive tape and whatnot. Uh, not sure exactly where those go. I think one of them went across here to ground two bits there. Next step. So on the this cap here, there's a silver part that just has some adhesive, and this just press fits. Now removing this, I actually had to heat it up with a hair dryer and very carefully uh, start prying just a little tiny bit. I gotta say, this is like one of the most annoying MP3 players to open, um, but it's so beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, uh, beyond that, let's see what else. I think it's time for this little bracket nearly to go on. So let's see. Yeah, I think that this has to insert, and this can only go on one way, and you can see it has to match the port direction. And everything has rubber seals on, interestingly enough. Uh, well, obviously this is meant towards, like, focused towards like exercising and whatnot. So everything's gonna be, try they're, they're gonna try to make everything sweat proof uh, as much as they can. And I believe this bracket goes on next. That just uh, pinches down so that you cannot remove this part. And I have two screws left. I believe the longest one, yeah, has a little bit of corrosion on it. That goes on the end there. And the other one, I don't know. 
I think I got all the screws. So there's just a random extra screw. Here, I optimized, optimized the design. There's one extra screw that's not necessary. Uh, yeah, if, if you can't tell, this isn't like a super serious, like how to fix this 100%, make it look like it's from the factory. Uh, but let's see, hopefully, uh, I made this mistake again. So yeah, we're gonna have to pull off this cap and luckily it's easy to get the second time. And this wheel has to come off because actually this front piece has to go on first. There's like a little hook. So easiest way actually I found to get the brass pins out is just use like a sharp pin and get just under the edge and then you can start pulling. Okay, this has to come out and go like you're pulling out. And you can see for the play pause button, there's like a little piece right outside there that actually has to seat into the, um, the bracket underneath this wheel. That's why this has to go in first. And then this and just kind of presses down. There's adhesive, I had to actually heat it uh, in order to, um, to get it off there. And I had to pry with a little razor blade very carefully along the edge. So just put these back. So like I said, this is not an exact how-to instruction. Um, this is just a video because there are no other videos, as far as I know, of how to properly take these apart, this model in particular, apart. So this is just a blind reference. And let's see. Actually, might have had to put the cap on first. Let's see. Hopefully there's like a little finger there. It looks kind of like it'll just click in. Okay, good. <laughs> it does. I was afraid that I would have had to take everything else apart. There is a very, like, or, uh, you know, order of operation orientation to taking apart and putting together this model. So you really do have to follow the service manual. I've read it, you know, when I first got this, but I don't really remember uh, what exactly right now uh, the order is. So I'm just kind of winging this, if you could not tell. Let's just make sure you know, the wheel still works. And finally, the final screw right in the end there. And like I said, there's a random screw left. I can't remember for the life of me. I think maybe on the back there might have been a screw hole. And the cap does lock on there. And unfortunately, mine's a silver model. I believe it came in black and silver. And mine unfortunately has a little scratch right here. I'm going to turn off the overhead light so that you guys can get a better view. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, the screen scratched up a little bit. I might try polishing that out, but it also could make it worse. So I, I don't know if I'd want to risk it there. I might test a little further up on the case. But anyway, yeah, here's the model itself. Um, you can pull out the thing to actually um, put take off hold. And uh, the play pause button is right here. And there's rewind, fast forward, volume up and down. And it, this has actually a very neat feature. This like, it's like a magnifying glass. You saw how small the screen looked and it actually looks significantly larger through uh, the window because it's essentially like magnified. And there's a home button and there's actually, let's see. Yeah, you can, you can see like how many calories you burned and all that. And if you set the time, what time it is. And if you press and hold, I believe you get into the menu system. And so here we have like a stopwatch and music, FM radio built in, playlists. Let's see what else there was. Like a jogging mode. You can search 
for music on here though on a 512 megabyte uh, memory that you don't really need to search um, the settings play mode equalizer counter reset for the pedometer count history advanced menu you can adjust like the equalizer um, power save which is whether it shuts the screen off or keeps it on or dims it. Display rotation, you can actually use this left-handed or right-handed and it'll flip the screen orientation. A USB power, whether to fast charge, well, 500 milliamp fast charge or only limit it to 100 milliamps. This was back in the day when USB ports were not quite as standardized and maybe a little bit flaky. We have information, and as I said, this is the NWS202, and yeah, 512 meg. So let's just go back, and you can set date and time. And the way that it counts your steps is it uses an accelerometer, and it has a G sensor here to do that. And you can enter your height and weight so it'll estimate uh, how many calories per step you're burning and all that. And it just goes back there. You can sort, change your play mode, and it just cycles back. So yeah, that's basically it. And sorry about the glare, it's really hard to film this. Um, the screen itself. There you go. But yeah, this is actually the same display that's in the MZRH1, among other MP3 players as well as this was in the Bean, and there's also one of the thumbstick models used the same uh, OLED screen. So people will often buy these. The reason why this is very rare was they didn't produce that many. This was towards the end of Sony's MP3 player run, well, like these small flash-based ones. Um, so they didn't produce many of these, and then people started buying these up to cannibalize to pull the screens out to fix their RH1s. So that's why these were kind of in high demand at one point a couple of years ago, and then stock just dropped out. Like you, you pretty much cannot find these anymore. There's only like one or two sellers that still have them. Uh, but yeah, luckily I got a hold of one, and I'll I'll use this just you know for fun. But obviously this only holds 512 megabytes. So. Really not that useful, uh, but I really enjoy the collectability uh, standpoint on this. Um, it's a really neat player in terms of the design, how it's sort of like like a little test tube, essentially. And I believe this is very similar to the model. If you've ever played uh, Persona 3, the main character has a, an MP3 player that looks very similar to this hanging off his neck. Um, and the model of headphones he has as well um those are very expensive and difficult to find and i believe um for people doing cosplays and whatnot um and so people would actually buy this mp3 player as part of their their cosplaying outfit so that also kind of strained stock of this so you really really can't find these anymore which kind of stinks even because it's such a beautiful player especially love the OLED screens. This one's nice and bright. I got really lucky. A lot of them have dimmed significantly by now. But yeah, anyway, um, I might try polishing little scratches up there if I can do it without making it worse. Um, but other than that, now this works. Now the battery works. The only thing that is really annoying I found is the USB port is recessed, so you need a thin enough cord, and a lot of my cords are thick. So they won't actually fit in all the way. So I actually had to shave off the robber off one of my cords so that it can fit in there. But yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, this look at the Sony, let's see, I always forget the model number, the Sony NWS202F. Um, tiny little like MP3 player from back in the day. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.